What if I told you you could take four single family homes and turn them into a 24 story apartment building and you didn't even have to build it to make a profit? Sound too good to be true? Well, I assure you it's not. And in this video, I sit down with Adrian Ellis who walks us through how he is doing a land assembly deal in Calgary, Alberta. Adrian talks about how he was able to purchase the four homes needed to make this a reality, what challenges he faced negotiating with the owners, a tip for gaining significantly more density, and ultimately how he will exit this deal for a profit before a shovel even hits the ground. Stick around until the end of the video where Adrian shares the secret to making this all happen in as little time as possible. And now, enjoy the video. So talk a little bit about uh, for for people that are listening and watching, what what does land assembly mean? Like, what what is that? Uh, explain that a little bit. Okay, yeah, um, it's it's basically buying lots that are adjacent to each other, purchasing them all, and then uh, it's like rezoning them. That's basically assembling them into one one lot. So when you're looking at those potential pieces of land, uh, I'm guessing that the zoning that's there would have been beneficial that like the, the zoning or no you said you're going through a rezone sorry so but there must be precedence in that area for something of this similar caliber 17 stories for you guys to want to assemble those four or five lots that you did was there is that the, is that the case yes exactly yeah yeah so the zoning is just residential r1 i believe or r1 or r2 so right beside one of those properties there's a three or four story um multi multiplex mm -hmm. But across the street, there's like four or six towers that are 17 stories. So the precedents had been set in that area already. And when we saw that, like the, the first two lots that we got were like number three and four in from the corner. So we had to get number one and two as well, just mm -hmm. so we could have that corner lot. And it's actually got access from three sides. So there's the corner plus the laneway in the back. So, um, but yeah, once we saw that we had the three and four, we know we needed number one and two up to the corner and seeing what's across the road. Yeah, they totally set precedence for us. Well, that's a great, it's a great lesson for people, I think, to learn is that look, you know, when you're looking at real estate, even though these are, you know, four, I'm guessing single family or something, low rise houses right? yeah, yeah. on single family lots in a residential zoned area, if there's precedence around it for multi-story, 17 story, something like that, um, the chances of getting approval are probably significantly higher because there's already that kind of density in that area. So Yes, yeah, exactly. And we spoke to a counselor actually after we had got the first two lots under contract. Um, he worked in that ward in Calgary, and uh, he's like, "Oh yeah, go for as much density as you can, as you can, because it's it's a growing area. They want that there. It's already happened across the street. Um, there's green space behind us. They just they want to change the way that uh, that community looks." Hmm. So you're now going through. Uh, you said rezoning. So you've assembled those four lots. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about how you were able to go and get number one and number two on the corner? Like, what was that process? Like, you obviously show up and knock on their door and say, are you interested in selling your house? Um, we started with having our realtor approach, but the seller didn't live there. These are all uh, tenants that live there. So it was actually a fourplex. So there's there's two fourplexes, a uh, side-by-side -side duplex, and a single-family home. That's what comprises the four lots. But the third, the third lot was a fourplex, and the owner didn't live there. We had a little bit of a hard time getting a hold of the owner. And he was a bit of a stickler at first. Like, he knew what his property was. He knew what we were doing. He had been approached in the past. So the agent wasn't really as gung-ho to negotiate with him as we would have been. So we had our CEO, uh, Ali Nazarian. He, uh, he's a great negotiator. And, <laughs> he's, a uh, good, he's a good talker yeah, and a great negotiator. Absolutely. Oh yeah, for sure. And he, uh, he spoke to the, the, the owner on multiple occasions, multiple calls, and uh, he finally got him to, to, to agree to sell. It wasn't any discount or anything whatsoever, no. but it didn't matter. Like the numbers all made sense still. Yeah, especially if you can go in for density on 17 oh, stories. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And and just to speak of further on the 17, like the we hired a planner to handle the whole process for us. And when we before we even went to the pre-planning meeting, they had thought that we could actually go for a 24 story potentially. Wow. So, so that's, even better than we Yeah, higher targeted. density, higher value. Yeah. So that's, that's still a possibility. So that's we'll crazy. see. So what does the process look like now that you've got the lots assembled? What's next? It's it's going in and, and putting some plans in front of the city and rezoning. Is that, is that where you're at? Um, the planner is approaching the planning meeting next to do the actual rezoning. Um, and after that, like we're really, we are not going to build it because we're not experienced builders. 
we may partner with a builder, um, but really our plan is to sell to a builder or developer. And, and I think that's something that a lot of people miss is that you don't necessarily have to take everything uh, from beginning <laughs> to end. Yeah. There's significant value that you're creating probably just by assembling those four lots as, as, as a first step. Now, you're not gonna see the same kind of lift in value if you were to go and get it rezoned, right? So there's different steps in, in development. Getting the land assembly is a, is a huge accomplishment. Um, getting it rezoned is, is another huge accomplishment. And then getting it maybe to site plan approval or something like that is maybe where you guys want to exit. But like you said, you're not builders. You don't know how to build a 25 story building. So, right, but right. there's going to be enough inherent value that you can potentially exit at that point, make your money and go on to the next one. Yeah, right? that's actually the beauty of land development. There's like many exit strategies that you can take along the way. Yeah, assembling is one. Uh, rezoning is another site plan approval and builds and I've, there's even a couple more i can't even remember off the yeah. top of my head right now but yeah like the the rezoning is huge like that gives us a huge lift and allows us to move on to uh pursue other projects and i think that a lot of you know people that are out there interested in doing something similar they don't necessarily have to know how to build it or they don't have to necessarily have to know how to take it all the way through they can exit and there'll be lots of people lined up to want to buy it at that point because you know maybe there's a builder that that is very familiar with that process and they can make their money on the you know the end units but you don't have to worry about that right exactly and i think that's probably something that overwhelms people with land development and assembling lots they think that they have to take it right to completion which they don't they're you can just rezone and then move on. There are so many great takeaways from this interview, but my favorite thing is definitely how many ways you can profit during a development deal. There are so many exit points and so many possibilities to add value. If you're interested in learning the exact process Adrian used to find, negotiate, and execute on this development deal, check out my development course on my website at darrenvoros.com. Adrian is one of my past graduates and is doing amazing things with his knowledge. If you've got specific questions for me, check out my new Ask Me Anything sessions that I do on Fridays at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's your opportunity to ask me any questions in real time related to real estate investing. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.